Pensioners FM. I'm here for the peace of this country and to pray to God to touch the heart of each and every one of us so that we can be able to achieve peace in Nigeria. We fought a war to keep the country one. Was it going to remain one? At any cost, it must be one Nigeria where every Nigeria can feel proud. If we come together, we can move this country forward. That positive outlook and determination to make Nigeria a peaceful and prosperous nation. It is due to this collective attitude that Nigeria definitely continues to remain a united and indivisible nation. The unity, camaraderie, and oneness of this country, peace and stability is extremely important for all. And we are going to continue to work for that. Peace everywhere. Peace in Nigeria. Unity for all. We pray to Allah's mercy to continue to grant us the blessing of this. It is time. Pensioners FM, this is Africa's model. 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 Our business is to speak for the voiceless and demand better deals for the vulnerable. Stakeholders must be alive to their responsibilities to the people. If they are not, we will shout. The program is Voice of Liberation on Pensioners 106.7 FM at Barigo, Onireke, Ibadan, or your state, Nigeria. Have you learned a voice today? Thanks for staying tuned. You are on to Voice of Liberation and Pension as one six point seven FM. Getting straight into the uh, major business of the day. Like I said at the session of the show this morning, we'll be taking off uh, with this uh, recent hot issue, which has to do with the arraignment of some miners yesterday at the Federal High Court, Abuja. Of course, uh, those miners were charged with treason and for attempting to overthrow, overthrow government. Of course, they were also uh, charged for raising, uh, raising the, uh, waving the Russian flag during the course uh, of that uh, protest. Among some other charges levied against those miners, of course, uh, we had about 114 uh, suspects who were arraigned before the uh, Federal High Court, but about 37 or 38 of them uh, were miners. And this particular move has generated reactions from diverse quarters, especially civil society organizations and some concerned individuals. We have raised their voices against this particular move, describing it as a show 
of shame. And the Amnesty International Nigeria in their own response asked the president to immediately order for the release of all of those minors. Some people also con uh, condemn the inhuman treatment that those uh, minors have been subjected to, forbidding detention since the month of August up to this point. And we're going to take a look at all of the legal issues and some of the perspectives to this uh, uh, particular uh, topic uh, this morning. And I'm enjoying this conversation by legal experts and public affairs analyst. Uh, I'm talking about Barista Pollution Lapo. It's good to have you around. Good morning, sir. Yeah, Israel. Good morning this morning. I'm also very really joined the conversation by BDA consultant and public affairs analyst, Minda, Mr. Adesan Babadi Joko. Thank you so much for joining me on thank, the show this thank morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, our listeners. All right. So uh, yeah. before I start taking reactions uh, from you, because there have been so many uh, reports with respect to this uh, particular move, uh, for example, the cancel to the federal government, Rebazonte Ezekiel, uh, said that some of these so-called minors are not minors, so to say, because they have children, they have wives, some of them are graduates and all of that. So let's take a listen to uh, what he said immediately after that uh, uh, scene yesterday in Abuja. Because I know uh, there is a juvenile All justice. Most of them are adults. Most of them are married men. None of them is a minor. Some of them are university graduates. The small, small kids you are seeing here, they came with some of their parents to come and greet their loved ones. They are not even the real suspect standing trial in this case. These boys were arrested in Kaduna and Zaria. Imagine the level we find ourselves now. Do, do you know how much it costs us to be at this level of a democracy in this country. These young boys are trying to destabilize Nigeria, using the Russian flags and other countries, calling on the military to remove our president. Is it fair to even remove the state governors that they don't want democracy again? If you don't like democracy, are we forcing you? You go back home and sit. Everybody is enjoying their fundamental rights. Nobody is abusing their rights. Everybody is enjoying free movement. And everything's are moving fine in the country. These boys only for no reason. They started protests, violent protests with the flags. Foreign flags, Russian flags. Haba. Is that what we want in this country? Don't mind the defense council. They will always say something to tarnish the name of Nigerian police. It's not true. I, in my own case, we filed charge against uh, 43 uh, defendants, and all of them were produced to the court today. All of them are adults. Forget about what they are telling you, that they are small children, this and that. Ask the defense counsel, do they truly know the suspect they are defending? So that was the uh, counsel to the federal government, from as I want to say, Zika. Uh, right there, saying that uh, it's a lie, that particular report that has it that those who were arraigned at uh, the federal high court yesterday were minors. According to them, they had children, they had wives, they graduates, and all of that. But of course, the uh, defense council also have their own response to this. Let's take a listen. We were in court this morning, and shortly before the plea of the defendants, mainly under eight children, could be taken. Some of them who were looking quite malnourished, who were looking quite very sick, started snuffing in court before the Honorable Justice Eguatu. Justice Eguatu, upon seeing the fainting of these young persons of school age, had to adjourn proceedings, had to stand up proceedings abruptly. We had to rush some of these young children to the, uh, clinic. the clinic within the facility of the court for them to be resuscitated. Some of them are still receiving treatment as I speak to you in the clinic. This young person has been arrested since the second day of August 2024. Over three months, they have been left without clothing, without housing, without proper care, 
they are looking very malnourished. Mm -hmm. As you can see the videos that are flying around social media. You informed that they are taking Gary only. They were kept at the Kuje Correctional Center and police. And at the IRT, the no. notorious no. IRT no. No. at South Abatua. At Sass Abatua. Now this is the facility that has held our young children that have been kept by this government over allegations of attempting to overthrow the president. The question now comes to how can a 12, 13, 14 year old boy who is looking very frail and malnourished attempt to overthrow the president? That is a matter for another day. But we have filed an application contesting and challenging the powers of the courts to try these young persons. And this objection is founded on very solid foundation. The Constitution of Nigeria in Section 18 vests on the government the responsibility of educating young persons. The Universal Basic Education Act and the Children and Young Persons Act vest upon the government the duty to educate its younger ones. Section 2 of the UBEC Act mandates the government to provide education for its young persons. Free compulsory education for all young persons. Unfortunately, young Nigerians have been arraigned in court today on the second charge of an attempt to overthrow and overawe the government of Nigeria. They have been granted bail. We will strive hard to meet the bill conditions, if we can. The conditions are quite neck-breaking. It is like giving bail with the right hand and taking with the left hand. We will strive and make, do our best to perfect these conditions. But if we cannot meet the bill conditions, we will come back to the courts and seek for a variation. Because we have shown that these are young persons who are hungry. The essence of the protest of August 2nd is to end hunger in the land. And we saw them in court today, looking quite malnourished. The problem persists, but we'll come back. Why should smudge? Yes, uh, Mashallah Baka counsel to the protesters uh, right there, saying that it is quite disheartening that those minors have been subjected to such a terrible treatment in the last couple of months. And of course, he cited the Child Rights Act and all of the uh, various uh, acts that actually guarantees the uh, freedom and the fundamental human rights of children in the nation. And these are the issues which we'll be talking about uh, today. Let me take off with uh, Barista Fulusho Lapo. Your day, because according to reports, some of those uh, minors uh, slumped and fainted in the course of uh, that particular trial. Yeah, thank, your, your take. Th okay, thank you mm. very much, and I thank you for for my colleagues too. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know it's going to do justice to the non-legal side of it. So let mm. me start this with the legal, On the legal side of it. Mm. Yes. Um. One. Let me tell us this: law is not emotional, and that is why most. Why that's why the scripture says the spirit of the law kills. The law doesn't know. Who, who even made it in the first instance? And it's not emotional. Whether or not uh, uh, this list that the the council to the state is, you know, very emotionally and all that, to me, I think that goes to nothing. And it doesn't hold water at all when we have to deal with law. So whatever emotion you might have, it is it has to be subjected to the rules of law. And now, what is the rule of law? That's the question. And I want to start from here. Um, one, who can commit an offense? Somebody took me up on the platform this morning while I was doing paper review. Uh, <laughs> in fact, it was, it was quite funny uh, because I defined who an adult is and, who, and, the, and criminal responsibility according to law. And th that means that Irrespective of the fact that you, may, you might not be an adult, you may be criminally responsible. Mm. Section 30 of the Criminal Code. Let me give it this way. Section, that section said that the only saints or the only angels we have in Nigeria are children between the age 0 and 7. Those children 
cannot commit offense under our law, mm. irrespective of whatever anybody may say. So they are free. Now, between 7 and 12, if the offender or the suspect, you know, is, you know, proved to understand what he was doing, then that person will be liable to committing an offense. But if he doesn't know, maybe he can just be doing something and doesn't even have it in the mind that such a thing might happen. That child may not be responsible. But when he knows, if it's proved that he knows, because of course they will ask him questions and a whole lot of things in court. Now, that means that between 12 upward, a person is criminally liable to an offense, to committing an offense. So, and defining who an adult is. An adult is somebody below the age of 18 years. Mm. So if a 12-year-old can commit offense, it means that irrespective of the fact that you are not an adult, you might still be criminally responsible. And so assault can be tried in court. Of course. And that's why we have juvenile courts in the first instance. We have juvenile courts. In fact, these days, the, the Child Rights Act, you know, the, you know, created a family court where issues regarding children can be uh, taken to. Mm. And that court has both criminal and civil responsibility. They have jurisdiction to, to hear matters relating to children. Children, in this case, somebody below the age of 18. Mm. So, meaning that these minors that we are talking about may be criminally responsible for mm. whatever actions mm. they have taken. Mm. So, let's take that. Secondly, I want to talk about bail. The bail condition they were given. I'm talking as a lawyer now. Mm. <laughs> so somebody should not come and strangle me. <laughs> 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 so I'm just interpreting what the law says. Mm. So the bail condition. One, when it comes to bail, bail is a fundamental right derived from Section 35 of the Constitution. Section 35 talks about freedom to the liberty of the human person, meaning that no Nigerian citizens should be subjected or should be falsely imprisoned. There is something we call false imprisonment. Mm. So, because even in Section 36 says that a person, that is the Constitution said, a person is presumed to be innocent until it is proved otherwise no, at the court mm. of competent jurisdiction. Mm. So, both Section 35 and Section 36 put together create a right to bail. And what's that? That this person is subject that is being alleged to have committed an offense is still not an of I mean, it's still uh, innocent. Innocent. Yes. Proven otherwise. Yes. So to that extent, let us allow him to be coming home and uh, to be coming to court from home. And in doing that, the court must not put anything to that looks as if it is punitive. Now, whether or not the bail conditions given yesterday were punitive enough <laughs> is, is taken, is given. How can a 12-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old, and I want to say that, that, a, that a child has children doesn't mean he's an adult. Mm. Especially, yes, from, that was the yes, especially from that side of Nigeria, mm. where they can just wake up and begin to have children one day. <laughs> so... That is out of it. You might have children, you might be anything, yet, according to law, you are still an, I mean, you are still a child. Now, coming to the bill, how come, how do we, how can we expect, even me, I can't, I, I don't know, I have not seen 10,000, I mean, 10 million naira before, cash together, mean, ah. Then if I see it, maybe I will faint. <laughs> <laughs> so, giving such a drastic, uh, a, 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 a demonic bail condition is, mm. to me too, it's not constitutional. I think the court must look at this. Mm. Looking at the fact that bail is not, it's not, it's not 
it's not it's not it's not a gift bell is not a gift it's something that we are entitled to by right it's an entitlement so you don't you don't you don't just wake up and begin to put conditions that cannot be that as that is unpracticable that's unworkable abacha and the state state that by the supreme court you should not put shenanigans that will make bail impossible for people it's not punitive you are just saying that okay let us admit this person to bail and let them share recognizance and, and surety so that this person can be coming from home and surety so that the person standing for him will be able to present him anytime he's wanted in court full stop nothing more than that and that's why we have police bill and and administrative bill and court bill so what are we now talking about so it's to me it appears the court has even given judgment mm. before even the matter has been heard and that is unfortunate and this is why i am using this opportunity to appeal to the cjn fortunately my lord is a man in skates so she should <laughs> she should be able to bring the human the human part that women are known for to, mm, to you know reform mm. this issue of bill because it's it it happens majorly especially when it has to come to political matters and all that if you are granting bill grand bill if you are not if you are refusing bill refusing bill it is your it is your you have that right or you have that power as the court to either admit or to not to admit to a bill so what i'm saying in essence is that these children one they might be culpable to committing an offense and two the bail condition they were given is wrong then three the offense that has been alleged to have been committed that's another thing entirely i do not know a child who can plan a coup because saying they want to overthrow government is Calling planning on the military is, yes. waving russian flags yes yes they might be doing that but looking at that side of the thing too i oh, know anyway, why i am so 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 comfortable is the fact that allegation does not make uh you to be to be guilty mm. the person that is alleging that you have committed an offense have to prove it beyond mm, doubt. Mm -hmm. it is not you that has been alleged that the law says you should prove your innocence no it is the person that is alleging that you have committed an offense have to prove it mm. and there are the rules that which within which you can use that by the provision of the law too so the law provided the ground upon which you can prove these cases so if the ground is not proved then to that extent but you know subjecting little children whether they are they have children uh, whether they have loved ones according to them or not to me they are children and to that extent nigeria has to you know work beyond just you know subjecting their own children to this side type of mm. that they have to be fainting and they even in court in court i even i, I even learned yesterday <laughs> that this was as a that the the arraignment was as a result of a fundamental right enforcement that has been fired earlier because they when they had got them arrested they 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 they, they, they rushed to court to get uh an order to to remind to remind them for 60 days after 60 days they were not doing anything so some people have to go to court to enforce their fundamental right and because of that they are now have to rush them to the court and we see what happens in the court premises so like i said the offense to by which they were charged they were charged i don't think children should be involved in those things to be mm. sincere whether or not they are raising russian flag mm. what of the people that are sponsoring them mm. how can a 14 year old in fact from that side they might not even know the implication of, of what they flags. were doing mm. They might, they might not know. So, and what happens? There is, there is something in criminal law that we call uh, mens rea, mm. meaning that you have to have the, the, the uh, uh, I've forgotten now, that you have to, in your own mind, uh -huh, mm. guilty mind, okay. that you have to have guilty mind. So you have to know that what you are doing is wrong. It's wrong. Mm. So before you can be found guilty on that. But if you don't know, so there are some times they would cause some things mistake and all that. Of course, we know that ignorance of the law is not an excuse. But when you are doing something you don't know you were doing in the first instance, and that thing that you are not doing, that you think you, are, you, you don't know, is being committed by a minor, then to that extent, the law 
you know, applying to minor should be used for that type of an offense. All right, I'm still going to take further reactions from you because you've raised quite a number of uh, points in the course of the, uh, your summation. Now, let me take this to Mr. Desumbo Badijoko. Let me have your own reaction to uh, this particular issue. You know, minors being arraigned in courts. Of course, they've been in detention for about two months now. Of course, the allegations that they were in children prison, some said they were in IRT. So many reports with respect to that. But then, let me have your own take. Well, well, the drama that took place in court yesterday uh, is not strange. It's something we are used to. Even adults have fainted. <laughs> some had been brought in in wheelchair, mm. and they will get off from the wheelchair the moment they were. Some will, bring, will be brought in in crutches. <laughs> you understand? So, so it's not something that they are learning from their parents, who are also criminals, because that's the reason why they are in court in the first instance. Now, I think the, the issue of detention arose from the offense that they were being charged with. Treason is not believable. I'm sure Barista knows that. And uh, I was even surprised that Bill had to now come into it. You know, that's the confusion. <laughs> or, or what one of my lecturers is a conflict of the law. <laughs> because if you are charging them for an offense that is not believable under the law, why do you now bring bail? And if you are going to release them on bail, why would you put that kind of uh, amount on children? Now they have to look for 430 million to bail all of them. Or is it that you are putting that money to see who will pay the money so that you can now accuse the person of being the sponsor? That could be the motive anyway. But we are not in the mind of uh, the judge. Mm -hmm. And we are not in the mind of the prosecuting team. But we are also not in the mind of the defense team too. Mm. Uh, though I saw some exaggeration in what he said in, in his What own, are some of the exaggerations to you? Uh, uh, saying they are 12 year old. I did not see any 12 year old or even 14 in that among those children. You understand? The minimum age you could have there will be 17. At 17, Somebody read the criminal law to me today. I think that age was the age of maturity that you can be prosecuted for. So when you now look at that, then you get confused the way lawyers will handle things. Yes, of course, they have a brief that they would have to defend their uh, clients. Mm -hmm. uh, but in doing so, they should also look at the implication of some of this action on the society. To the civil society, of course, as far as I know, Amnesty and the rest of them, are, they've not really helped this country in any way. They've actually been fueling crisis so that they have something to talk about. And that's why I, anything that comes from them, I don't want to even hear again because I've been following their trends and patterns, the matters, the selective, uh, uh, what is it called now? Uh, interest in issues and all of that. Then it puts we. I will want to speak to the morality of the whole thing. The defense counsel was saying that government should have, should did not give them education. The last time I checked, there are schools in the north, and education is even freer there and cheaper than in the south. But because of ideological reasons. These children will not show up in school. Even when they were doing school feeding, <laughs> you understand, just to encourage them. Findings shows that they will come eat the food and go back home. <laughs> you understand? And when they don't, when they refuse this education, President Jonathan even started in nomadic uh, al Majiri schools. Mm. They still did not go. Because they are Sheikh and Malam or whatever have told them that uh, that Arabic and Islamic teaching is the main thing. Remember the meaning of Boko Haram? Mm -hmm. Western education is a sin. You understand? When you have that environment and people, they, that means they are preparing them to be ready made to, to unleash Behem at any point in time. And whatever happened, what happened in Kaduna that time was not a protest, it was violence. These ones they are accusing of uh, being juvenile now, 
a juvenile that is smart enough to climb street lights with club and was smashing it. Tell me, money was used in Kanu. The M uh, three MTT laboratory was <laughs> destroyed, looted. Somebody that is sensible enough to loot an item that is uh, 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 valuable has now become. You understand. When it comes to the uh, the malnourished way they look, uh, hey, that one is another issue entirely. And it's not peculiar to the fact that they are children. The way and manner the detention facilities in this country are is not encouraging. You understand? I once had an uncle, he's now late. I was detained at uh, Kirikiri. Kirikiri is supposed to be a maximum prison, have you? Mm -hmm. What happened then was funny. The said offense or of fraud was committed in Ogun State. And he ended up in Kirikiri. Mm. You understand? And you see someone powerful just trying to prove that he can deal with him and he dealt with him. Within that three months he spent there in that detention, when he came back, his fair in complexion like me, you know, the skin has turned black. If I had to, we had to, he had to spend like two, three weeks in the hospital before uh, he can even, and he never recovered from that you know, he fell, later failure. And that was what led to his death, to, to cut the story short. You understand? Now that is an adult. That's a 50 something year old person. So the, the condition in those facilities, facilities. is not thing to write home about, whether it is an adult that is detained there or a, ch uh, a children. Or a child. You understand? The thing is, we need to also address that. Even the main correctional uh, centers, go to Agudi here, go and see what you will see, uh, find there. I've been there sometimes back to maybe on, on mission outreach, and I know what I saw. You understand? I went to build somebody in one police station somewhere around uh, Akwete Day. You know? The cell. Just the, the 10 seconds I stood in front of the bar, the iron bar, I did not get myself because of what was gassing out. Mm -hmm. Just 10 seconds. Just 10 seconds. I had to move back. Now imagine somebody spending the night in that okay. place. Mm -hmm. So when you look at all of these things, you begin to wonder. And that's why when they go in there, they come back hardened mm -hmm. and not corrected in any way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't understand? Because... And these are failures of government. And that's why you see this uh, jailbreak taking place because the condition that those people are had, they are not correcting anything. Mm -hmm. So when Buhari changed the name from prison to correctional, correctional center, center, I was like, is this man serious at all? Mm -hmm. Refurbish this uh, facility and you, that is what will make them correctional. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there are prisons in Norway that, you, that looks like five-star hotel. Mm -hmm. They have swimming pool, they have internet, they have everything mm -hmm. in the prison. <laughs> in Norway. Mm -hmm. And here in Nigeria, you cannot even, they, can't, they don't even have toilet facilities. So when you look at it, it's not something that the, the malnourishment is, is, is a general problem. Not that because they were children. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. adults have had worse experience. But you, children except those who are, to such except those who are uh, mm -hmm. VIP. Mm. Uh, special like of, Bob Risky. Yeah, like Bob <laughs> yes, like Bob Risky, like this uh, all these police officer, Abakiari okay. and the rest of them. You understand that they will even bring to court, not in Black Maria, but mm -hmm. in in Elox uh, air condition air condition <laughs> hey. So when you look at a country that is structured in that way, that's why I say when you when people like Ernest begin to make their noise, I don't listen to them. Because they are they are too just sentimental and we are selective in their interest. We don't speak to all these core issues. It's just that you are housed to just begin to attack the government. We will address the failures of government. We just mention some of them. Mm -hmm. When it comes to specific issues, you don't bring sentiments into criminality. What the, uh, in the, the police now, or those who have carried out the investigation have done wrong, is to now want to punish those children without getting their sponsors, knowing fully well the level of ignorance mm. that those mm. children have. Mm. Who are those that have spoken the lang native language to them? Mm. Who are those that have given them the instruction? Mm. Who are those that have asked them to go and be carrying the flag of Russia on our country? You understand? 
why would you leave those ones to continue to enjoy themselves in their hair conditioned houses and then you want to innocent children that will be punished for it or let's say let's just call them youth to be mm. safe because uh, using the word children is not really uh, is controversial as far as this case is concerned so let's mm. just call them youth you understand ignorant and innocent youth will now get punished for an offense orchestrated by some big men up north who are kind of untouchable who are the ones that know the real motive for carrying that hashtag, end bad governance. The only way to end bad governance is through the ballot. Mm -hmm. If you now go collect money, ask the same group of people to vote somebody that you feel should win against the qualified and competent person that will do the right thing. And that one now won. And you are now coming back again to push the same category of youths to the street to go and come. No, no, that is not... That's the way things are being done here, which is wrong. Speak like this, use this platform, address press conference, do peaceful protests, and mobilize people ahead of the next election to really know that, yes, ending bad governance is voting them out of office. That way, you have ended the bad governance. And the new government that will replace them will learn from how the past government was defeated and adjust. Botswana, after 58 years, the ruling party just lost election. Mm. They never thought they would lose. Mm. But because people were tired, you understand? That is the way to go. We all for the Kenya and the Senegalese uh, episode mm -hmm. is still very fresh in our memory. And the countries that have decided to say, okay, it is military that we want. Burkina Faso, Mali, and uh, Niger, they, are, they have decided to make a change. Mm. Some are saying that we should call for military, like the, the uh, prosecuting council is saying, how can they be asking to call for? If the democratic, uh, uh, democratic uh, leader or politicians are messing up, of course, military can come. And if they come, they will be welcomed. What Nigerians want is good governance, whichever, it doesn't matter whether That's it's civilian or military. Mm. That is what they want. You cannot be preaching democracy to the people in Niger. Now, they will not listen to you. Because, uh, or the people in Burkina Faso. When their president is moving freely, walking kilometers on foot, feeling among. Meanwhile, when the civilians were there, they ride in bulletproof van, an molest them, an <laughs> helicopter. You, they can't even have access to them. <laughs> but the people in Kaki are moving freely among them. Who, who do you think they will prefer? So when you are seeing things happening around you, and you are not learning... Rather, you have been arrogant in office, not doing the right thing, and when people now protest, you arrest them and you begin to subject them to all manner of humane condition. That is unacceptable. Mm. So that is the thing that we should look at. But of course, some people will now, now want to take advantage of that thing and begin to also misinform, miseducate, or react in a funny manner. That is also not acceptable. All right, so uh, we're still coming back to you, Mr. Desmond Barijoko. Let me get back to Barrister uh, Folusha Olapo. Now, I want you to speak to the area, to the aspect of the detention of this, uh, of this minors, because uh, Mr. Desmond Barijoko said we should not call them children. So I will stick with the word minors. But based on if, they are, if they are below 18, 18 years, yes. then to well, that extent they are children. So according to the, now the intention of this of, of this of this of minors or these children, uh, as the case may be, I want you to uh, I want your reaction on this. Is it right? They have been in detention since August, and this is November. It's not about them being minors alone. He said something that I think is sacrosanct about detention and the venue of that detention whether adults or children there is this right to the dignity of the human person that is guaranteed by the constitution it is the dignity of that human person that we are fighting for most of the time if you look at the morality of law sometimes that's why some people will say law is not moral but at least to some extent, there are some morality in the law too. So, whether an adult or a minor, none of them should be subjected 
to a situation where it will affect the dignity of their human person. And I continue to tell us this. A right is not a gift. Mm. It is inherent in a person because you were born as human beings. It is, it is God's gift to us. It's not a gift by government. If left to government, government may not even want to give us any rights. But fortunately, God created us in his own image. And to, that image is what is being respected in us as human beings. And the, that dignity must not be tampered by any means, whether by detention or by, 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 by uh, punitive bail conditions and all that. So, if there is a place called detention, what is detention meant to do? It's a holding place for a suspect where, okay, we hold you here until we'll be able to go to court and probably do your case. And how long is that supposed to be? It's supposed to be humane. It's supposed to be conducive. At least conducive to the extent that any reasonable human being should be able to live there. Is there a duration? Because, you know, that's the, 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 the major issue here. Is there a particular duration where a, a, a person is supposed to be, a suspect rather, is supposed to be in detention on his trial? Well, the law provided for that. Okay. The law says a person should be given bail, uh, yeah? Should not, be, should not be detained for more than 24 hours or 48 hours where the court the, the, is far from the person, 48 hours. But, for instance, if you are in, in a village and you cannot quickly get to court to get to then maybe 48 hours. But when you are in a city like Ibadan, 24 hours. Now, and if, like I said, they have gone to court, immediately they were arrested, this matter that we are talking about, they went to court to get a court order. And court allowed them to detain them for 60 days. And that is, is that court order. Is it not a frivolous order? Is it right? No, it's not a frivolous order. Because the court could grant that where it, if, where there's a demand or there a request that they want to, you know, investigate some things and they have to be with them for that. Okay. It, it doesn't. It's so not it's only because, by the law. Yes, it's permitted. Okay. It's not only for them. You know, there was a time a may feel it to have to come out and go to court to enforce, enforce his fundamental human right. Okay. Bawa too, and some a whole lot of them. Especially when you have to come to these uh, political cases, which to me, so but it is the court has the power to detain a person more than that. In fact, that was why the law says within for 24, 48 hours you should come to court, take that person to court. If you have any issue with him, get a court order to do that. So they've gotten a court order to detain them for 60 days, 60 days, and this is November. And 60 days since August, supposed to have ended August, September, September ending, or at most October ending. Right. Mm. So, assuming, so why are, still they, why are they still there? And that is why some people, human rights activists, went to court to enforce that fundamental right. But because it's a fundamental human right provided to by the Constitution of Nigeria. So, where your right is being is being is is being assaulted. You have the right to go back to court to enforce it, whether by government or whatever who, who whoever the person might be, and that is why most of the time I I I caution landlords. Landlords are in the habit of, you know, negating the rights of individual. That a person, you know, is a is your tenant doesn't mean you are his boss. It doesn't mean you are his lord. It doesn't mean he's is you can is your servant. No. There is an agreement between you. Whether you, you give that person agreement or not, the law, you know, presumed, in fact, assumed, it's not even presumed, assumed that there have been an agreement. So it is an agreement between you and him. He is there just as a tenant. So for you to be able to take him out, to evict him, you have to go by the process of the law. And that is why the law says that if you do not have any contrary agreement, if it's a one, one, if it's a monthly tenant, give him one month notice. If it is a uh, by yearly term, yeah, is it by yearly two six months? Mm. So give him three months notice. If it's a yearly tenant, give him six months notice. You cannot just because you are you are serve, you are you are a landlord just wake up one day and, and put the roof out and mm. 
use police to to you have that person can go back to court and enforce his right. So if that can happen, even within landlord and tenant, not now to talk of criminal offenses. Mm. Criminal offenses are very in fact the court look at it more from the alleged person's side than even government. And that is why the constitution insisted that it must be proved beyond reasonable doubt. Beyond reasonable doubt means that anybody, any reasonable person looking or hearing what is being said will know that justice has been done. So it's not just that the ordinary man in the street, he listening to what is being said, will say, okay, this man has committed the offense or not. So it is the law that uh, an accused or a suspect should be protected by law because that person is not uh, uh, is presumed to be innocent. He may not be innocent if the courts heard that he is not innocent of this offense, but through that time, he's still innocent. But because of our system, we just think somebody because he thinks is a is a is a is a is a is a honourable member could, and that's how some, some honourable members. Like Brutus said in, in, in <laughs> sorry, I've forgotten that name. Mm. Brutus, you know, in, is that in Shakespeare's uh, mm. whatever. Said so that is all honorable men. That's what, how honorable men do. So honorable men will tell a Nigerian that I will let you miss. I will, you will you miss will in disappear. this country. Yeah, you will disappear and mm. nothing will happen. Honorable, mm. out of the dignity of that person, you just slap and you say you can do, you can even call the IG. Mm. So these are some things that are not working well in our country. And it, it, it makes me get, it gets me angry mm. to see that somebody that is supposed to quote to be honorable is just dragging himself that low. By now, by today, I think if we were in the same climb, his constituency should be, should be, should be against him already, you know, mm. trying to withdraw him from that house. Because it's not, it's, not, it's not worthy to be called a honorable member. Mm. So what I'm saying in essence is that the law is there. Let's, and like I said earlier, the law is not emotional at all. A, a, a minor had committed an offense that is committable by, <laughs> if there is anything like that, he should, be face, he should face the music. Now, that they committed an offense that is supposed ordinarily to be... Uh, not bailable, mm, but there are some coming to that. Yes, mm. there are some instances where there can be, uh, you, they can allow a person to bail in unbailable matters too, even okay. in murder, especially where the 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 the, uh, the suspect is sick, or there is some in, intervening matters that the court itself can decide whether. By this thing that is happening, this person might be allowed to 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 uh, to build. But is that applicable in the, in this particular contest? This is a this is this is this is this is this is, this is a treasonable offense. Ordinarily, like I said, mm. it should not be bailable. And uh, but because probably because they thought they are minors, and mm. I think that's where they are coming from. So if they are minors, then and they do not want them, you know, to stay in such. A deplorable state of whatever they are being kept, then they could be allowed to bail. Mm. But in this instance, even the court itself is giving some punitive bail conditions. So I don't know. Sometimes you see, we are learning every day, and I don't, I can't say I know everything. <laughs> so maybe sometimes to something will happen in this country, especially when it has to come to with to law, and some of the 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 pronouncement of of our courts. I begin to pinch myself that this is not what we were taught, taught. in law school. Now. I'll be able to change it. <laughs> so you sometimes you don't know. So most of the times too, it happens. But of course, there are some instances that right. mm -hmm. bail may be granted. Now, you said something earlier about uh, the juvenile justice system or the juvenile courts. And, you know, from my own uh, takeaway from that particular point you made, you know, one could conclude that this minors ought not to be tried tried, I mean, at the Federal High Court? Of course, ordinarily. And you know, the, the jurisdiction of, uh, uh, um, what is it now, the offense committed cannot be, cannot be done in any other court than that place. 
Mm. So I was, I think so it has ve- to do with the offense. Yes, now. I think mm. it's that to do with the offense. And again, if they're actually minors, uh, the only thing they can do is that they will not be tried at the open court. Meaning that w- when when their trial comes out, people will be told to excuse the court. So mm. it will be them and their counsel and probably their family in attendance alone. So because they are, they are, they are, their uh, personality have to be protected too. Now, yeah, looking at all of the conditions upon which, still staying with you, Rasta Fulishwalapo, upon which a minor can be tried in court, would you say that any of these conditions have been breached in any way? From they, have not been, they, are, they are not on trial now. Okay. It's just uh, they have been charged. Okay. So uh, it depends on what goes on going forward. Uh, and I know most of the time by the time they are coming for the next something i think it's just government trying to trying to ensure that uh oppositions are not really on them see labor can now talk can cannot now talk as they were used to before mm, because, because they made sure they dealt with their leader and if that is the case and making people you know i think after after uh, end back governance of August 1, there was supposed to be another protest. October. Yes, mm. so uh, that one, nobody... Never saw the light of the yes. day. Yes, mm. even if it at all it happens, it was just... You know, that is what the government wants to create, to create fear in the mind of people that this government is not Buhari government, or it's not uh, Jonathan's government. It's not so, so, so. And I think that comes from the fact that Executioners may not want people to pass by him with a cutlass. Mm. They may be afraid because Mr. President himself is the chairman of protesters, if you have to, 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 to go by that way. Mm. And even during military regime. So, but I think he's afraid of his own shadow. Mm. So what can we say about that, unfortunately? Mm. All right, now let's take a look at some reactions that have so far trailed this particular incident. In his own reaction, the former vice president of Nigeria, Atikwa Baka, said detaining and prosecuting children arrested during the August 2024 hashtag end bad governance protest smacks of government inhumanity. Atiku said if the children were just being arraigned three months after the arrest, the sort of dehumanizing conditions they'll have been subjected to it could only be imagined. The former vice president who condemned the trial of the children said the nation can be accessed by the way it treats its most vulnerable citizen. He said, and I quote, a disturbing video of minority children being arraigned before a federal court on the orders of Bola Tindibu led federal government has been brought to my notice. The audible scene reminiscent of a Nazi concentration camp once again reflects the low premium the current government places on the lives of the vulnerable, especially the children. For FSC Section 11 of the Child's Rights Act guarantees dignity of the child. It is said that every child is entitled to respect for the dignity of his person and accordingly no child shall be subjected to physical mental or emotional injury, abuse, neglect, or maltreatment, including sexual abuse. Section B says, uh, subsection B says, subjected to torture, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment, and the children are being prosecuted for their alleged role in the hashtag and bad governance protest, which took place between August uh, 1st and August 10. On his part, OB criticized the government's handling of protesters, especially the minors who were brought to court under humiliating conditions. OB asserted that the constitution allows the citizens to protest against poor governance. In a statement on his ex ando he said, and I quote, I was horrified by the disturbing scenes captured in a video circulating online showing 124 protesters, among them minors, appearing in court in an effort to assert, uh, to assert the fundamental rights. He noted that the footage depicted minors who were so weak that they could barely stand with some fainting from exhaustion and lack of, uh, of nourishment. The two students looked uh, visibly malnourished and uh, deprived. We criticized the treatment of the minors, pointing out that they were poorly managed while in the uh, federal uh, custody. He also emphasized that the allegations against them, protesting against bad governance that directly, that directly affect their life loads, are protected under the Constitution in a democratic society. Uh, Mr. Adesu let me have your take as we got some of these reactions. It's normal. When the, when, when the ruling party gives an avenue yeah. for the opposi- opposition, opposition to mm. throw burnt as they will. And that is exactly what has happened. And I don't think they will do better if they were in the <coughs> presidential. 
some of them will even be worse. Have <laughs> So because uh, we know the known mafia are among them. Mm. We know the way they handle some of the things that concerns them directly, mm. and uh, which gives an impression of how they will govern if they find themselves in that position. Sort of. mm. So that's the thing. But uh, it's not their fault. Mm. It's the fault of the administration who have refused to do the right thing. Mm. Now, like we used to say, <laughs> good governance is not rocket science. It only requires political will mm. on the part of those who are the hands of affair, and that is what has been missing. And I have said earlier that's come. The appearance of those uh, accused now, I said I'm being careful not to join the league of those who use the word children. Uh, those I saw, uh, I will categorize them as youths. <laughs> so, so, and um, it's not peculiar to them. And that was why I had to speak to the issue of the facilities generally, even make personal experience from what I have seen going there for a purpose and from the experience of my little uncle, I know. And the selective or the injustice or inequality that is also there in the system, that where it, is, it only happens to common people. Mm. VIPs are not subjected to such Our treatment. treatment. Mm. And this same VIP, even though they were brought in with uh, air-conditioned buses, will still come out in crushes uh, on which year. <laughs> and when they are granted the bill, they go into one courtroom and remove all the neck guard and whatever mm. they have, uh, you know, mm. costumed themselves with. Mm. <laughs> and they work freely. You and I both know someone to accuse of the same offense somehow was given bill on medical ground mm. to travel abroad to India and right from inside the plane, somebody that was sick at the point of death in Nigeria became here. The miracle was taking place inside the plane. <laughs> and the moment they landed That's at the airport, the you know, they began to call the shot. And uh, <laughs> before they know what is happening, look, they have to call the Indian government. Like, if that man should leave your country, <laughs> it will lead to serious diplomatic crowds. So they, they have to remove their hand and box him back to Nigeria. When he saw that he was he wasn't enjoying the mm. freedom we expected, yes. so he, he said he's okay. He wants to come back home, and he came back home. It was subsequently that he was now, you know, released. So when you look at all these scenarios that are played, there are precedents mm. to whatever has happened in court yesterday done by uh, adults now in quotes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said they are learning from their parents. You understand? But that aside, the core thing that we should be looking at and which everybody should be addressing is how to be holding the government accountable without resorting to violence. It was because of the violence dimension that the protests of August took that was what made these people. They are the victims. They are, the, they are just trying to make, uh, set the, make them uh, scapegoats, so to speak. Like he said, to instill fear in others who would want to protest. How come nobody was arrested? We were protesting in Ibadan too now. And some other parts in the southwest region. How come we didn't have a case of people being arrested arranged. and arranged mm. like that? Mm. You understand? So these are things that... Uh, and when children were joining them, we, we some of us called that, you, look, don't allow your children to go out. Oh. Mm. They be, they were parents, those ones, if they are truly children, they, are, they belong to some parents. If the parents have control over them, how come they allow them to participate to the extent that they will now be incarcerated in this way? And how come their parents have not gone, you know, when we had uh, the Chibok and Dabchi incident, we saw the parents coming out. Even when the, the railway, whatever, we saw the parents coming out. Where are the parents of these ones to? How come they've not really organized themselves to say, please, help us appeal to the government to release our children? Do you understand what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. They didn't drop from the, blue, uh, from the sky now. They must have been product of some homes. Where are the parents? How come they are not appearing in this in this equation, how come Amnesty and the other noisemakers have not reached out to them to know, to really let us know the identity, to if they want to whip up you're, that sympathy? You're, you refer to them as noisemakers. Why? Because that is what they do. They are in business, <laughs> and business of what propelling, propagating bad news, and 
selling the image of the uh, country. They try to in government a negative accountable. Way. That's what they have been trying to do. I am not comfortable with their selective interest. How do you mean? We've had lockdown in the southeast for how long now? Tell me once or any time Amnesty have really spoken to that. Or what is happening there? Is it correct under the law? Mm. To the extent that they are even extending a day to two days in some in states now. Or what they are doing? Is it is it not a violation of the rights of the people that they are locking down to the extent that if they now want to come out, they threaten them with guns. Mm. And these are not government officials, fellow citizens like themselves. But Amnesty will keep quiet on that. That's why I said selective interest, and I'm not apologetic about it. They should defend themselves if I'm wrong. So these are things that I am saying. You can see me getting, me changing the tone of my voice because <laughs> some nonsense happen in this country which are not supposed to be happening. And it's because... Is Nigeria must we portray Nigeria in the, uh, as a banana republic where everybody can just do anything? When will we start obeying law and order? That's why all these people, when they get abroad, they can't cope there because you cannot break the law anywhere there. Mm. You understand? Only people who are used to syst uh, uh, an organized system, those are the people that can cope abroad. You understand? And even those of them that will end up in governments, that's why they misbehave because they, are, they went into governments with that foolish orientation. And that's why when they get to government, they begin to behave like Ikwechi that is trying to quote the other time. Mm. Wanting to make people disappear. Mm. You understand? I don't know when he became a Babala. <laughs> 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 it's because he has been molesting people mm. before he becomes yeah. that honorable. Yeah. He probably had a rich background, so he has been oppressing people all over. So he went into government with that oppressive mindset. And that was why he could be talking to a fellow city. He's just privileged to be in that position. Of course. If you want to go by qualification, perhaps that boat driver is more educated than he is. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So that's the thing. It's because we, we live in a country where an average rich man, and I've said this several times, an average rich man in Nigeria wants to break the law. He wants to do things illegally because he believes his money should buy his way for him. You will go to a banking hall, see people on the queue, you want to go straight to the counter because he has a fad uh, bank account that and is familiar with all the tellers. And those ones too foolishly mm. will be smiling at him and bypassing the people that are in their front to attend to him. So when they enjoy all this unnecessary privilege, it makes them to misbehave. And that's why they don't do the right thing. So all these things are what we should be speaking to. That's why I said... What the opposition figures have said, yes, they have not said anything that people who are not as uh, popular as they are have not said. So that is the thing. But the mm -hmm. thing is, we should try to be looking at how to make the country egalitarian. Mm -hmm. Not that some people will commit offense and will be looking to how to punish some other people. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, it is only when it concerns the VIP that we get to know about it. Mm -hmm. When it concerns the ordinary people. I Go to know. an average police station. Go mm. and see the kind of people you see there. Mm. Mm. And the condition at which they are subjected to. But you can never find VIP there. Even when they want to arrest themselves, they will, use, they will still be doing it with Kossi. But the ordinary man, they will kick, box, do mm -hmm. a man out. You understand what I'm saying? So these are issues that is wrong in our society. And uh, we can't be hanging that on the government. We, we have our own share of the blame too. Yeah. All right, on this same issue, the executive director, Hope Behind Bars, and a human rights lawyer, Funke Adili, has this to say. In August, during the, after the protest, when a number of people were picked up from different parts of the country, which included minors, a remand order, an ex parte order, was actually granted by Court 9 of the Federal High Court. And when you look at the remand order, the names of 75 protesters were included in that order, and... Out of those names, we had minors. Their ages were clearly written, um, written on the motion paper. So they were remanded um, ex parte for 60 days under the Anti-Terrorism Act. Now, immediately after the 60 days, we're expecting the government to charge or arraign this set of persons. But what we found out was just about 10 of the names that were in that motion paper were arraigned. And so... Um, the, the law firm, very, law firm of Femi Falano and Dejadinho decided to file a fundamental human rights action 
to ask the government to do something about the children. This was, we were in court last week, and um, the situation that happened today was an aftermath of the fact that fundamental human rights action was filed to say, where are these children? Because we and a lot of other advocacy organizations knew that indeed children were being, um, um, were being arrested. We didn't know their whereabouts. Some of us had gone to Kujef um, Correctional Facility to find out, only to find out that they were at the IRT. So what happened today is an aftermath of the fundamental human rights action that civil society organizations and the law firm of these human rights activists actually filed. Okay, so today is the first appearance, uh, the is children. the arraignment. Yes. The, the charges were read to them. Yes. Uh, and uh, they, one after the other, yes. they answered to their... Not guilty. Uh, not guilty yes. to, the, to yes. the charges. Yes. What about the fundamental human rights action that was it's filed? It's still pending in court it's and pending. we're still going to continue. Okay, I yes. mean, that, that means it might be taking... Part them were minors. There are about 38 of them were minors. Okay. Yes, but they were also adults. Out of 75, yes. about 38 of them were minors. Yes. Okay, now, give us an understanding because I know... Uh, there is a juvenile justice system mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. which also take cognizance of the child mm -hmm. rights out of 2020. We started because it's not just today. It's the fact that these children have been kept in detention longer than they should be. Unlawfully. So they are unlawfully. So they are right by, the, pass by the Nigerian state. Yes. By the Nigerian right, police. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. They've been kept in different police custodies. Yes. They alongside, right. were they kept in adult prisons or children prisons? Their right to personal liberty and fair hearing under section 35 and 36 has already been violated because... But the a, fact that they yes. stayed longer yes. than necessary. Yes, yes. Uh, even the police had to take some of these children, it wasn't just one child, had to take some of them out to get some form of health care. Today, during court. Mm. Yes. So not only treated. They have malnourished. They, they, they look like they've been stabbed. I mean, some lawyers in court today had to crowdfund money to just quickly get food for them. That's how bad it was. That's how it bad it looked today. Conditions are very stringent. I mean, the, 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 the provision of the law is very clear on bail. Bail is not supposed to be punitive. Um, Dogo versus the state. The law is very clear on that. Now, these children who were supposedly um, um, being tried for, for treason and who were actually uh, protesting against hunger and suffering in the land, we're giving very stringent bail conditions, 10 million naira, um, sh two shorties. One of them has to be a civil servant with, of level 15 and, you know, the, the, um, a family member. I think that is really stringent. All right. So that was the submission of Funke Adelie, Executive Director of Band Dice in a televised interview uh, yesterday. And she also spoke about the bail conditions, the human treatment, you know, that this uh, minors have been subjected to in the last uh, uh, couple of months. Now, I'm still staying with you, uh, Mr. Adesimu Badijoko. To some people, this is a move by the Nigerian government to silence the voices of dissent, those who are advocating uh, for their rights, or those who are advocating for good governance, so to say. Is that your position as well? Well, that is an opinion. But the truth of the matter is, um, I would rather put it this way. It's a move to enforce law and order. Not to, not to silence the voice. Nobody can silence my voice. I criticize the government every day. You understand? But I don't go out to destroy public properties. I don't constitute nuisance on the streets. I don't violate the right of others in the name of protest. You understand? So it's difficult. For, I did not position myself for the government to accuse, to be able to be arrested and accused of one for the thing or be detained. So these are issues that uh, people should know. I don't know if it's in this studio I mentioned it or somewhere else, that there's a thin line between peaceful protest and disturbance of public order. You understand? Now, police will always be by the sideline when you are protesting. And because there's a thin line, most times, due to emotional or sentimental reasons, protesters get carried away and they cross the line. You understand? And the moment they cross the line and protest now becomes disturbance of public order, the law enforcement has a duty, you understand, to enforce the law. The law. Mm. And now in an attempt to enforce the law, if you attack the police officer, they also have a responsibility to defend themselves. Now, all these CSOs are fighting for rights of others and others and others. During Hensas, 
almost everybody were talking about the lucky shooting. But in Ibadan here, two police officers were roasted alive and were hitting. Their bodies were dismembered and roasted and they were eating. Eating up as in fed horn. Do you understand what I'm saying? I did not hear any of those group address those ones. Is it that the life of an officer of the law doesn't matter? Any? Or what exactly are we, have we turned the country into? So these are issues. In as much as I'm an advocate, as a student I was a student, union leader we have you know, done a luta and all manner of things but at the same time we are always very cautious that come and we address the people having that orientation and background and with this avenue I always tell people come in as much as it is your right to protest know that there is a thin line you must be guided and organizers of protest too also do make mistakes when those children were coming and following you Common sense demands that you send them back. Parents are not supposed to allow their... That's why I say, where are the parents of these children? You cannot tell me they are orphans. I've not had any group of parents coming to say... To beg the government to release their own children for them. Do you understand? Even the lawyer defending them is, did not mention anything about the parents. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. That tells you about the setting in the north, Alimajiri is. They are ready made to, to unleash anything. I think perhaps that is what the government is trying to correct by doing what they are doing, even though they are now co committing a serious violation of the rights of those children, whether child rights or human rights. Mm. It is violation of their rights. You understand? So we cannot but condemn that one. But I know the heart. There's a motive behind it. The president too now now waded in to ask the attorney general to take up the file and look into it, meaning that before the end of next week, mm. those children will be free. That's the implication. That's just for whatever, for the next appearance, they will all be discharged. Well, perhaps we'll wait for the court to decide. That is what will happen. This is Nigeria now. Let's yeah. look. We, yeah. we yeah. shouldn't be hiding behind one finger. Let the parista address the that one. General, <laughs> the attorney general has the, the power of knowledge. We call it knowledge protocol. It's uh, a power given to the attorney general to stop a case. So if he decides that these people should go on with a particular case, he has the power. And if he decides that, okay, we do not want to go against you anymore. So he has the power. So all he has to do is just to send somebody to court and tell the court, I have entered the knowledge. Well, it's his right. It's the, it's the most powerful person. And, they, and they withdraw it and they uh, release. <laughs> and by the time they are released, mm, that's they shouldn't now hand their proper mm. medical attention yeah, should, should be, be given, given to them. them. Sure, sure. Mm. And not just medical. Now they should now be rehabilitated. Mm. Because if you just release them back into the streets, ah. so these miscreants or mischief makers <laughs> will recruit them again for mm. another cause yeah. of theirs. You understand? So they have to be rehabilitated and ensure that they put into proper training, either skill acquisition or proper education mm. so that they would not be ready made too in the hands of uh mischief makers because those are the ones and that's why i said earlier that the fault of the prosecutors is that you cannot just use these children you are supposed to investigate to get the identity of mm. those who have instructed them mm. and those ones should be in court as well yeah. as a matter of fact the students should be let go and the ones that have sent them, the real sponsors, are the ones that should be standing trial. But not that we will now be giving them ministerial appointment or other <laughs> political posts or even elect them as governors of their state in the future. Because that is what happened. That's what happened. No bandits have been accused to be mm. governors in some states. Mm. You understand? And some ex-governors have been accused to be sponsoring kidnapping. Mm. And they've not been able to defend themselves. But rather the law enforcement will also sweep that under the carpet. So these are things that I mentioned earlier that we are doing selective justice. And so this CSO too will not take those ones up, probably because uh, their sponsors are among them. You understand? To really put, beam the searchlight, put, bring them up uh, on the off seat too, so that they will know that, yeah, people are watching them and they begin to 
you know, de-emphasize this activity. Now, you shouldn't turn mm. the country into a jungle. Now, Mr. Desmond Balijoko, there are people who have a different argument or people who argue in contrary with uh, what you said. Because, you know, I asked the question that, is this a move by the government to silence the voice of freedom fighters? And you said it's the, actually the contrary. But based on what we have seen in the last one year, you know, the continuous arrest of uh, the NLC leader, invasion of Serap office, and according to some statistics, you know, human rights abuses have, have increased in the last one year. That's one. You know, government has information that we don't have. Some people used to accuse me of my critical positions again. Often, I'm not. So anybody say having contrary opinion, of course, it's an opinion. You are not supposed to align with my own. Mm. It's not compulsory. But you don't force me to also align with yours. Mm, of course. We reason along with each other. I defend my opposition. You defend yours. Government is government. Every, the most criminal organization in any country is the government. I repeat that the most criminal organization in any country is the government. They know what goes on. They All will right, just pretend. Ju ju just a few seconds. Let's take this call. Hello, good morning. All right, we lost it. Continue. You understand? Mm. So, if they invade a rap office, they followed an intel down there. If they arrested the NLC child, like I told the labor, some labor guys that were that almost attacked me sometimes, I said, come. You guys don't know what Ajero does in the secret. So if they are inviting him for inter 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 interrogation, he should honor it and go with his lawyers. You understand? Don't you don't know what he does in secret? How come they didn't, they left the TUC man? Is he not a labor leader too? So these are things that we should know. We shouldn't follow people blindly, and we shouldn't be sentimental about it because the law is not sentimental as the lawyer even portrays the other time. So we need to be careful. Mm. That is my own position. I will say things the way they are. Not because uh, I'm enjoying from the government, no. There are areas where even I say some things that people, uh, you're not even afraid that you're saying it already. What if you're arrested? They cannot arrest me because what I have said is the truth. And I've said it because I want them to really look into it and do something about it. That is all I wanted. Not that because I hated the government. What do we what 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 do we do all these things for? All right. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks so for joining us, Mr. John Jacob. Voice of John and Jaco. Thank you. I want to thank the two analysts there. Thank I'm you equally well. aware that the power of the AGS is not in that. I'm aware that section one seventy four of the nineteen ninety nine constitution confers a normal power on the attorney general of the federation. So it's still can discontinue criminal proceedings against anybody. Why subsection 3 particularly quickly adds, in exercising such powers, the ADF must ensure that such discontinuous is for public interest and the interest of justice. I want to thank those analysts there, and I'm sure that the federal government will see something to do pertaining to the arraignment of those people. But let me just say this, no one is above the law. Anyone can be arraigned in the court. So if anyone commits offense, no one should visit because it's small or not. There is law. This law governs each and the, every one of us. Thank you, John Newton. Joke is my name. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. John and Joku. And of course, dear listener, you can also be part of the uh, conversation, you can be part of the program this morning by calling the studio lines 0908 111 1067. 0706 639 Those are the numbers to call. To be part of the conversation this morning, you can also join the program via Facebook page, Pensioner Space FM. Now, our very staff for Lucio Lakpo, there are people who have been calling on this government to rather focus on what led to this protest in the first place, which has to do with hunger, primarily. That instead of focusing on arresting protesters, so to say, then why not just focus on the main issues that led to the protest? Your take on that? Well, I think it's a good. Uh Good advice, but uh, one who could say that um, we should not just treat the symptom, we should go to the root. But again, uh, that, and that is what my friend is trying to tell us, that of course you have the right to protest, but you do not have the right to destroy things. Uh, or let me put it this way, you have the right to protest, but you do not have the right to commit an offense while protesting and i think that thin line 
it's usually blood, especially when it comes to protests in Nigeria. Uh, we believe not until people begin to kill each other, burn vehicles, you know, committing arson, even to both private and public properties. That is what is called protest. That is not protest. That is crime, criminal in its place. Now, of course, you might say that government on our own side failed to meet people's needs, especially when they have to come to social justice. Social justice is, you know, distributing the 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 the, the, uh, the goods of the country, the patrimony, in every way that each and every Nigerian will be comforted that at least I'm getting something from the government. It's not that uh, we are going to buy 270 million naira car for some people, and some people will just be hungry, or some people will just be plying a road that is not even worthy of that type of car in the first instance. Hmm. So I think government is just they 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 they, they, they seems to have you know uh, inoculated themselves from the hardship of the country, and that is why people are angry. It's not because they are reforming things. Of course, if you are reforming things, you must, you know, factor in the people too, because reformation is about people. Governance is about people. I kept on saying that at all times. If you are defining democracy, I think people came out about three times in that definition. Government of the people by the people for the people. So everything is about the people. So if you are, if you are making a reform, it has to do with the welfare of the people and of course because our constitution is a welfare type of constitution it guarantees the welfare and security of the people and the pursuit of happiness section 16 said nigerians should be happy and that is why by our law we could sue the federal government or any state government that failed to make us happy i think the civil organization should have done something like that even before, by now it's not only protest in the streets and the road that could make us pursue government. I know some mm, things may not come out of it. In some the, people believe that the judiciary cannot be trusted. That's the, that, that is the opinion of some people. But unfortunately, that is what we have now. Unfortunately. So because the judiciary cannot be trusted and you put the law in your own hand, and that is why we are having this that we are having now. You cannot just be waving another country's uh, flag and you will be expecting the, the government to keep quiet. And especially because it is the waving of gov uh, Russian flags Flag. that, that mm -hmm. set up uh, 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 Niger, Burkina Faso, and the rest. Government took power, they were waving Russian flags. And probably they thought Nigeria is an extension of Niger, and they have to do that here too. So sometimes too, we have to look at things. Holistically. Holistically. Mm -hmm. Of course, government is not providing what they were supposed to provide. But we too, or the protester too, had gone beyond their power by by waving another country's flag it is not done you see most of the protests the sri lanka the the the, the bangladeshi the uh, brazilian everything whenever they are protesting the major thing you will see amongst them is their flag they will be flying their flag how many times do you see nigerian flag in fact if they are maybe two or three so i think we should come back to the basis what are we protesting for how do we go about this protest? Unfortunately, these guys are just the uh, Don Conforico, the ones that are actually the sponsors. Who was the who, who who initiated the flag in the first place? Who paid for it? Because I'm not sure it's imported. Even if it's imported, somebody is going to pay for it. So who who amongst them did that? And these guys are just vulnerable. They don't even have quotes. I don't know. But I know majority of our majorities doesn't have, they bear the name of their town. And that's why we have Kiari, 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 Kiari. So, uh, of course, but here, we, like he said, here we have an Olakpo, we have Mr. Badi Joko, we have like that. And Baba Olakpo will tell me, the Mari Embe, And of course, it is. So, and his own father too will do that. So, when they are protesting, we just go and sit down somewhere and begin to look at them. We are along the car and lay daily lie. That is it. But there's nobody that will be the break that will, you know, stop them from doing or trying to 
you know, mentor them from doing what is wrong. Probably they may not even know the the the, the, the difference between a Nigerian flag and a Russian flag. I mean, these ones that are um, that on trial. The person that brought about the flag in the first instance, the person that you know paid for those things, the person, the 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 the, the organizers of those things. Where are they today? Well, as regards the Russian flag, I could recall that there were some some people who were arguing that there's nothing wrong in doing that. So I wouldn't know the position of the law uh, as regards that. There's only one flag in Nigeria, and that's Nigerian flag. Flying, and if 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 you are flying another flag for the purposes of businesses, because hotels do, churches do, maybe because they are international, something, something, something. But you are protesting against the government and you are flying another person's flag. You are, that is a vote of no confidence on your own government. And you are saying that this government is no government to you. And it is treasonable. It's only that, it's only that, it's only that, like he said, if you are ending a bad government, you have to wait until the law provides for an avenue to end it by voting. So you have to wait until 2027. Mm. And I know if these same people, these same characters come begin to you know, uh, campaign for 2027, we are still going to vote them in. Mm. So most of the time we are accomplice to them too. So we cannot say we are free. So somebody said, "Omo wa kin she di bebere." Now Omo ento on she di bebere. Go to the place and you are hungry and you want to put the blame on another person. No, it should not now, be done. Let me make uh, recourse to that particular statement, uh, you know, which I raised earlier, which uh, which has to do with the waving of Russian flags, because you know at that point I was you know trying to remember who said that exactly, and now I have it. Omo yele shore, the former presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, he said there is no crime in flying Russian flags during protest. He insisted that it is not a treasonable offense. According to him, Christian leaders fly Israeli flags in churches, while a lot of people fly Palestinian flags in solidarity with the Palestinian struggle. The statement comes on the heels of you know, that particular directive as at the time. But I think with your explanation, that has been clarified. The because, United Nations fly mm. many flags. In fact, almost all the flags of their members. Mm. Most, uh, and it's in America, be their head office. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, OPEC in Switzerland fly several flags mm. it is not an offense if you are projecting your organization to be an international something but you are protesting against your government and you are flying another country's flag is is means a vote of no confidence to the government of your country and probably you are inviting that other government that you are flying with flag to come and take over control of your government who does that mm. All right, you're still on the voice of liberation and tension is 106.7 FM. And don't forget that, dear listener, you can be part of the uh, program this morning by calling the studio line to 908 111 1067. Those are the numbers to call to be part of the uh, program this morning. And you can also join the uh, program via Facebook page, Pension and Space FM. Hello, good morning. All right, you can call us back if you have a chance to do so. Now, Mr. Desmond Badijoko, like I said earlier, you know, people, you know, some people or some Nigerians seems to have lost their faith in the judiciary. And if I know based on what we have seen over the years and some people that believe what played out after the 2023 general election is a clear indication or was a clear indication that the Nigerian judiciary cannot be trusted. But then based on what you've seen on based on your own observation what can you say about the judiciary in nigeria would you say that it's still an institution that can be trusted we have no <clears throat> alternative to the judiciary as far as uh, <clears throat> interpretation of law is concerned and um, we should be speaking to or making demand that there should be a reform, an holistic one. Part of the problem that is bedeviling the judiciary <clears throat> is the recruitment process. Now, if you continue to recruit on a politic ground, political patronage will keep having this problem. You understand? If a father emerges as a chief justice and uh, before leaving office, Put the son and the daughter-in-law, make them a, a judge. If they are presiding over a case and the friend of the father is an interested party in the case, 
disputing the justice will be served. So these are issues that uh, we have. We should reform the judiciary in such a way that at the state level, the governors will have no hand, no involvement in the appointment of judges. There should be a system where judges will rise through the ranks and promotion and maybe haven't met certain condition, there will be a body that will review their credentials and of course recommend them for appointment as, judge, uh, as judges. And same thing should be done for the federal government. Only at the level of the Supreme Court. And in the United States, I know professors of law in the universities guess Supreme Court appointments as justice. But here, it is only practicing lawyers who have become presiding judges that will rise. They've forgotten about the universities. And the reason why they can't, because, especially at the level of Supreme Court, why you cannot just for ignore that fact is because the Supreme Court is not just a court. It's also a court of policy. Anything that comes out there becomes automatic law. And you will not still deem it fit to include at least one or two out of 21 justices from the university. You understand? These are things that are wrong in our system. I don't know if I'm making sense to the barrister because yeah. I'm not a lawyer. No, you are. <laughs> you did in the first, uh, during the first republic. You understand? Justice Elias, CJN mm. then, was a professor. You understand? So we need to. To, to the bench. And there's nothing bad if we look at, okay, all our justices are corrupt. We can invite justices from other mm. systems that we can trust and let them be part of it. Justice Aguda was chief justice of Botswana mm. in his days, all the way from Nigeria. And I won other countries, I think the Gambia. Yeah, the Gambia he, yeah. he, he went there to help their legal system. We can ask for help to strengthen the judiciary. If that is what we need to do, to you know, put confidence, then put pressure on the lawmakers to ensure that well, their funding does not pass through the executive in any way. You understand? So that they will not be at the mercy. Nobody will blackmail them. Mm. Then we now need to also put some disciplinary measures in mm. place mm. that would not spear anyone that is found wanting. By the time we do that, we have sanitized the judiciary mm. and we can now begin to get the trust. But for now, not having faith in them, we don't have another option. Mm -hmm. Going to the street to say you want to protest, destroy the country, you only land in trouble. Mm -hmm. The only way to hand bad governance is through the ballot. The other alternative... And people I, don't even trust the electionary process. We have I mean, to... So it's no, more no, no, like no. there is no institution Hello. to trust. You want me to take me to another <laughs> level? As far as I am concerned, mm. hmm? both our electoral laws mm. eh, and our electoral body, they are trying because they are, it is like the referee and the regulation booklet. You understand? The Electoral Act is a regulation booklet. INEC is a referee. When it comes to the, the football match, now tell me, if Team A and B refuse to play by the rules, what can the referee do? The worst he can do is to abandon the match. Mm. You understand? He cannot force them to play by the rule. We should look at our politicians. And one thing that can put an end to that is for the legislatures to now amend the Electoral Act to insert just one clause is the most important thing for now, independent candidature. That will weaken the political parties mm. because they are the ones messing up the system. Mm. Ordinary primary election, they will not be able to conduct. They will take primary uh, pre-election matter to Supreme Court. Mm. You understand? And Supreme Court, too, will, because they have brought it before them, adjudicate on that, and elections will be cancelled because of pre-election matter. So, <laughs> you understand? Like the case of uh, Sanfara. Mm. Rivers. By Elsa, the governor yeah, was taking the answer. Governor elect. Yeah, it's supposed to be sworn to. And he was now disqualified because his deputy governorship candidate had miss. 
uh, issues with his certificate, the same certificate he used to el get elected as a senator and is serving in the chamber. Do you understand that kind of things? So when you look at all of this, it is the players that would, they are too desperate. So we need to put independent candidature there so that anybody whose party refused to sponsor can go alone mm -hmm. if he's so popular and he will not give the process problem by saying he's going to court to begin to charge and sue and sue. All they just need to do is put conditions there that will make you to be able to stand as independent. And people that are individuals that are popular, they don't need any godfather. They will emerge. Mm. And when they get into the chambers or get elected, they now begin to look at the fact it will even help us to bring quality into governance. Mm. Because you will not be confined to political parties to get those who will serve in your cabinet. You can call on anybody. Yeah. You understand? Because it is about the people. But here, you must pick a party man by hire by funds for force. Or a party man must nominate somebody to you and he will be loyal to that party man and you will say he's not performing in the ministry or office that he's holding. These are problems that we have. Somebody were, some people are carrying electronic voting and we have not matured to that level yet. If American election can be hacked, we are not talking of Nigeria. Let's forget electronic <laughs> transmission of results for now. But let's look at how we can give room for independent candidature that would you know bring some sanity into the system more and more people who feel yes they can stand alone will come in and we are moving forward democracy is, is beautiful mm -hmm. america has never even during the civil war they maintained their democracy mm -hmm. and the man that defined democracy most people don't know that it was during abraham lincoln's tenure mm -hmm. that america fought civil war mm -hmm. all right uh let me have your own take as regards the Nigerian justice system, the nation's justice system. What can be done to restore the confidence of the Nigerians in our judiciary such that we can trust them? Instead of going, you know, taking to the streets to protest, we can say, well, we're going to take this up legally. Uh, well, my friend has said almost everything I usually say when I'm on this thing like this. is the recruitment process. I've been saying that from day one. Uh, he even mentioned the case of Aguda, who was uh, the CJ of Botswana and Gambia, CJ, Chief George of that, those nations. So meaning that apart from we getting our own people from here that are good, that are sound, like I said, Justice Elias was a, a professor, Unilag, law teacher, and he was appointed not only as, 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 as CJ and he was an attorney general, Later become became a CJ, the CJN, and later worked with the with the uh, International Court of Justice. So you can see. So if the method of recruitment is eased up, it's not this that because my father was a a son or a, a body of venture, a member of the body of ventures, or because it's a judge, the CJN. And can you come? Because you see, I usually say say one thing, you know, as a joke. Because it's not a joke to me. Then it was not. In fact, I cried. You know, when when I when we finished law school, before you can be called to buy, you needed a venture to sign off that you are fit and proper to practice as lawyers in Nigeria. And we went myself and a friend, and so about two or three friends went to one of those ventures. And he asked us some questions. Which school did you come out? Uh, uh, did you attend? What university did you attend? We told him. Uh, where are you from? Who is your father? He says, him. Say, where? Who are you? You didn't. You had so. Get out of my office. You can imagine. We were just looking at. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't graduate from U Unilag UI Ife, and you are coming to me. Who do you think you are? Get out of my office, and if I see you the next second, I'm going to get you arrested. Mm. This is a venture, for God's sake. Mm. <laughs> Fortunately, we went from there to uh, another one. I won't mention him. Mm. And he even bought 
chicken for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is so the, the recruitment process. process has so to be addressed. You don't have to know somebody before you can, can be recruited. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. So I think that was the final reaction. We've got to go. We're way out of time already. I most appreciate you, Mr. Adesum Babadi Joko, a media consultant, a public affairs analyst. Thanks for always being there. And of course, Barista Polusha Alak for a legal expert and public affairs analyst. Thank you for always being there as well. And thank you for your time on the show this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. To you, dear listener, thanks for being a part of the program, Voice of Liberation and Pension is 106.7 FM. On behalf of the producer of Voice of Liberation, by Bati De Tiamu and the entire members of Reduction Crew, I am Israel Adejumo. Be keep listening to Pension is 106.7 FM and keep enjoying your weekend. Pensioners FM, this is Africa's model. 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 Looking for that radio station.